because GM is based on using a CD-ROM, you have to make sure you order it beforehand and have it on hand and put it in your drive. We're going to show you what you have to do to get your computer configured each time you use the CD-ROM. Now it looks a little complicated, but since you can't store data, this is the procedure you're going to have to use. If you're at this point in GM programming, you're ready to reprogram a PCM or any other module, that means you have gone to GM and you have a subscription and you have signed up and they have sent you the CDs in the mail. You have the CDs, you have loaded the TIS program, TIS, and you have the TIS disk, the update disk, in the computer that you're going to use to reprogram the vehicle with. So you've done all that, so at your desktop, click on the TIS icon that was placed there when you downloaded the TIS program and it takes you to this page here. Look in the top left hand corner and you see configure. When you click on that you get a drop down window, find IO management, click on it and it gives you a window, a pop-up window here if you will. You need to define which driver and device you're going to use. So go ahead and use this screen in the following pop-up windows to select that J25 pass-through driver. Now click on drivers and you get this pop-up window. Click on the word browse up there and it gives you the TIS program file bin. It takes you there. Now from there you have to go to the downward pointing arrow and click on it and you get this drop-down window. Go down and find the word bin, B-I-N, and click on it and then you get this pop-up window. Find configure actions PS dot DLL and click on that and of course you get another window and then go ahead and move the slider bar until you find J2534 dot DLL and at that point go ahead and click on it and it takes you and it shows you that you have told this system where your J2534 dot DIL program is located. Go ahead and click install. After it installs it, it goes back to this pop-up window here. Click add now because you want to add that driver and then it asks you about a logical name. You need to name your device and and when you're naming your device you have to be very specific. Type in generic pass-through exactly as you see it here. It must be exactly like this. A capital G for the word generic, then a space, a capital P for the word pass, then a space, a capital T for the word through. And then click on the downward pointing arrow underneath driver and find J2534 pass through driver and click on that, then click OK. Now you're back to this window. Go ahead and select generic pass through device, cl click on properties, and now it wants you to give the device name. You don't have to type in anything here. Click on the downward pointing arrow and it's going to show your pass-through devices. Ours is a Kardec Plus through technologies and that's why it's in there. So we click on that and highlight it then we click OK. Now at this point here we're done selecting the driver that we need so we're going to click OK and close. At this point here, we go right back to where we started from. This time we want to select a service programming system. Click on that and it wants us to make some decisions. The first decision is select diagnostic tool. We're going to select a generic pass-through device because that's what we're going to use. Then it says select programming process. Do we want to reprogram or do we want to replace and then program the new computer? Whatever you're going to do is the one you would click on. If you're just putting a reprogram into the existing computer, you would select Reprogram ECU. Since we're replacing a computer today and then programming, we selected Replace and Program. Now, it says Select ECU Location. We always select vehicle, whether we're doing it on the bench, out of the vehicle, or in the vehicle. Now, this off-board programming adapter, we we're not sure we know what that is. It's something indigenous to GM, so we always select vehicle. Then we go ahead and click next. Then it wants you to select the 
vehicle that you're going to be reprogramming. So it wants model year, vehicle type, and car line. And at that point, go ahead and click Next. Then it gives you some instructions. Connect programming interface to the vehicle on the PC. Verify vehicle battery is fully charged. Engine off, and they want the ignition on with the engine off. And it tells you to connect the interface and get ready to do this programming. So at this point, you have your PC or your laptop connected to your pass-through device, and the pass-through device connected to a vehicle with a good fully charged battery on it or a something to support that battery, a good clean battery charger or a jump start unit. Now click next and then it says turn the ignition off, remove existing controller from the vehicle, install new controller to be programmed, turn ignition on. Whether you're changing the computer or not you're going to get this window. If you're just reprogramming the existing computer just ignore this window. But if you're replacing the computer, now is the time to do it. Turn the ignition off, then replace it, and turn it back on. Go ahead and make sure that you have all the connections done correctly, because if you don't, you're going to get an error message. This, the communications could not be established with this vehicle controller. Please ensure proper connection. After you've made sure that you've connected everything correctly, the ignition is on, go ahead and click OK, and then just click Next. And you're going to move forward because the this program, this TIS program, has now recognized the PCM on the vehicle. This is the VIN that it recognized. Make sure this is the VIN of the vehicle you're working on, that you have the correct computer. It's very important to validate that you have the correct VIN that you're dealing with, or else it's all going to go bad from here. Go ahead and click Next. And then it says, which one are you doing? Well, we're going to do the PCM, and we always select normal, and then we uh, click on the next. And then it gives us our selections. Which calibration do we want? When we select one and click on it, it gives us a description below. If we select the other, it gives us a description below. If you have any questions about calibration selection, and at this point in the program, you shouldn't. You should have gone through the video training on how to check for updates on GMs and you should already know which update you want at this point so that you don't accidentally put the wrong one in. So at this juncture here in this reprogramming you're going to make a selection on the one you want. You're going to double check and make sure whether a TSB led you here or your diagnostics led you here you make sure you have read and understood the TSB and make sure that you have the correct calibration and then click next. Select it, click next, and here you are. It's giving you a list of what it's going to do. On the left hand column it gives you an ID 1 through 8 there, then it says current and select it. What you're interested in is find your current ID and your uh, selected one, make sure the description matches, and then select next. And then it's going to start programming, and it'll take several minutes for the ECM to go, or ECU to go ahead and update. When it's done, it takes you to this page, and it says programming complete post programming instructions. Follow the controller specific instructions below. If there are no specific instructions, turn the ignition off for 30 seconds to reset the controller. Now, what it's saying is, don't reprogram when it's done, try to start the vehicle. It wants the ignition cycled off so it can reset the controller and then go ahead and turn it back on. And it's giving us directions here that says the crankshaft position variation has to be relearned. It tells us we can use the Tech 2. We know other ways to do it through our aftermarket diagnostics. And it gives us any information, any instructions that we have to pay attention to. Just because you reprogram this computer doesn't mean this car is going to start right up. You have to follow these instructions. Then after you do that, go ahead and click close after you make sure you understand what this vehicle has to have done to it go ahead and click close you're back to this um, first page that we were on and you have successfully programmed a GM computer